Hi there, Mark here again, and welcome to part three of my Super Clod Buster build guide. Um, we got to step 26 last time, so we finished the gearbox assemblies, and so it's straight on to 27, and we're going to attach the front and rear gearboxes to the chassis. So hopefully, in this part of the guide, we'll get the chassis finished and up on its wheels. So let's get on with it. Okay, so the only hardware for this step we're going to need are 12 little 6mm screws, machine screws, and four of these metal plates. Right, and I've got here the rear gearbox, and you can tell that by only by the direction of this bracket here. So, as you can see, uh, if you point it to the left, as we look at it, it's the rear, and it's the front points to the right. So, we've got to get the chassis the right way around. With this moulding here, shows that that's the front. There is an F on there, and there's a, an R printed on the back, so we know which way around it is. The first thing I'm going to do is going to get the uh, steering arm here connected to that ball joint. Um, make sure you've got the bigger side of the hole of that uh, ball joint facing downwards, so that wider end of the hole will go onto the ball. Well, it takes quite a push. And now we've got to locate the, uh, the ball ends on these arms onto the larger metal balls on the chassis there and we're going to need to secure those with a bracket at the back. I'll just put the bracket in place and then just offer up the arm and I'm going to get that held now by a couple of the 6mm screws. I hope you can see that a bit more clearly there so that's the way each of those attaches on. Just get the other two screws in place. So that's the first one done, so I better get on and uh, put the one on the other side. And don't forget to put some grease on the uh, ball joints themselves as it shows in the manual. Okay, with the two arms mounted, the last thing we need to do is pop on these blue stays and the manual shows using this tool to help push them on. And there's one. And the other. Okay, so that looks like it's gone okay. So uh, exactly the same with the other gearbox. This time I'm going to put the uh, the blue arms on first. See if that's any easier. I think it might help to hold this into place. Yeah, that might be easier that way around actually. Okay, so all the arms are connected now and uh, this all moves quite freely so I think that's a success so it's on to the next step which is building the shocks and here's some I prepared earlier so there are seven obviously they're all the same I only need to show you how to do one so I've had a little bit of practice first thing you want to do is get your rubber tube and cut it to 19 mil long you can match it up to the diagram there so you just need one of those your shock body F5 and your BM6 which is uh, basically it's just a screw Pop that into the body, get your rubber sleeve on, and you want to pop a screwdriver down into hold that head, your 3mm flange nut, and just screw that all the way down to the end of the thread, your spring, and your F4 shock bottom, and just screw that on all the way up to that nut. All you need now is part F6 and that just clips into the top. And it is as simple as that. So on step 29 we're fitting those dampers or shocks and it's exactly the same fitting for each corner. Um, obviously two on each corner. Uh, you need your 27mm screws, your two little brass tubes and some flange nuts. Oh and you'll also need two 3mm washers um, for each corner as well. I found it easy to fit the bottom ball joint on. Uh, you need to push it on with something. I'm just going to use the end of a wrench here. Just pop that on the ball. Same for the other shock. Just pop in your brass tube into the top hole. 27mm screw. And that 3mm washer goes on and then just pop 
that screw into the middle of the three holes like so obviously same for the other shock and then it's simply a case of a flange nut to secure those screws or bolts and as I said it's exactly the same for each corner so there's all the eight shocks fitted now step 30 is attaching the RC unit, it says basically that's your ESC and one thing just to notice here is we've got to reverse the connections to the rear motor and step 31 is attaching, it says the mechanism deck which is this thing so let's get on with that ok so this is the supplied ESC obviously there's four wires for the motors and as you can see for the rear one there you've got the wires reversed so yellow to green and blue to yellow and the front motor is connected straight through yellow to yellow blue to green now these wires are supposed to go up the side here and route through this cutout in the top deck but uh, basically with this ESC um, I couldn't get it to route properly because the wires are too short it must be shorter than the original ESC obviously this isn't a Tamiya ESC so I'm gonna do it like this a tip from a good friend uh, Uncle Bob of Uncle Bob's RC's so yeah now the wires do fit and they should be out of the way of suspension and uh, the, the steering arm so that looks good like that so I'll get that double sided taped into there and I'll get my receiver down in this hole here and as you can see on this ESC the wire to the switch is so short it won't go to where it's supposed to go which is over this side in a hole so I'm going to screw it on top there should be able to get to that under the body so I'll just get on and get these electronics fitted in and show you what it looks like okay so that's it all fitted you can see the top decks on it's just the four 12mm self tapping screws there to hold it on as you can see the wiring is ok now um, I've got my ESC and my servo wired into the receiver that's down in that hole there just duck that in with some uh, velcro and as you can see I've attached the switch just to the top there I've found some tiny little screws I don't know if you can see uh, just made some little holes in the deck because uh, I normally find that double sided tape just comes off in the end so that's the switch on and uh, yeah let's turn it on I've got a battery in and I think it's a good time to just check it all out and zoom out a bit so here we go let's try the steering yep it seems to be functioning correctly and let's try forward you probably won't be able to see the axles turning but they are turning the right direction both turning the same way so that's forward it's a bit noisy and let's try reverse yep that seems spot on so we'll just get on with the next step which I think is putting the tyres on now I will warn you it does take a bit of effort to get these tyres on it's a bit tricky um, there's a bit of a technique I think that I've worked out but uh, you might have your own but I'll show you how I've done these now make sure that you get the chevrons facing the right way uh, on the wheels you see what I mean you've got a left hand side and a right hand side to the truck you want all the chevrons pointed in the same way on one side so that's the outside of the wheel and I've got the chevrons pointed forward and then for the other side of the truck again chevrons forward and the wheel facing to the outside so I've just got the last one to do which will be this one here to finish the set so I need that wheel to the outside and then the chevrons pointing forward so I need my wheels to go in that way on this one so the way I found to do it was first of all just get one end into the tyre so put it in at an angle and that's not too bad goes in and then get the other end on first so just get the rim over the lip first on one side so it does take some force and then work it round make sure that it's gone and seated properly that one looks okay 
and then this one's a bit harder now so again just start getting one side of it onto the rim first I might have to pick this up to do this because it's harder than the other side now it's going as I say you need some force okay I think that's just popped on yep and it does say in the instructions to apply instant cement around the rim there I'm not sure about that but there are holes you can see I think there's four holes in the rims on the inside and on the outside which you can get the end of a tube of instant cement in and squeeze it in there I'm going to try without first and see if they stay on if they don't obviously I shall be squirting some glue down those holes anyway so that's my four tyres done I've just got to get them fitted and I think the chassis is done step 33 shows us how to attach the wheels which is very simple but first we just need to finish this uh, battery cover uh, part A4 with a slot in it and you've got C9 plastic part goes in this way around and we just need to attach that on with two 3 by 6 self tappers and that's that done then you need these B5 hex adapters you need your BH2 which is your brass part, your brass hex and uh, your four lock nuts for the wheels get your chassis, make sure you know which way around the front is Put your brass part on the axle first, then your adapter, and get your wheel. Make sure you've got the chevrons pointing to the front of your truck. Uh, just pops over. There's a quite a long way in there to get the uh, the lock nut on. Let's give that a nip up, and as they say, Bob's your uncle. So that's one wheel fitted. I don't know if I'm going to get it all in shot, but I'll just get the others on. Right then, they're all on, and now I can't really get it all in shot. I nearly got it all in shot, as bad and best as I could do. Uh, so yeah, your battery goes in the slot, and then you've got that cover, and your battery lead comes through the hole. And you just pop it on, just sort of uh, spring clips, and uh, yeah, that's uh, the chassis pretty much finished. So all I need to do now is get this gorgeous grey body prepared for paint get some paint on it, get all the accessories um, bolted on and uh, this should look quite amazing. I'm sorry I can't get it in a, the, the shot again but uh, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful and fingers crossed you join me on the bodywork video. Cheers, bye.